Wow. Okay. Just this morning, I finished Tokyo Ghoul, and uh, I have I have some things to talk about. I was not expecting Tokyo Ghoul to surprise me this much. I haven't yet read Tokyo Ghoul Re. I'm just going to be talking about Tokyo Ghoul itself, being the first out of the two parts, I guess you could say, since Re is sort of like the sequel. But I will read Re pretty soon, very soon, in fact. You best believe I'm going to make a video on Re when I finish that as well. But again, we're going to talk about Tokyo Ghoul in this video because I have plenty to talk about with just Tokyo Ghoul. I know everyone's probably heard of Tokyo Ghoul. It has one of the most popular intros ever. It has one of the most popular main characters ever, and it is probably one of the most popular anime ever despite the anime being a complete lackluster adaptation of the manga. The manga was much better than the anime, everyone knows that, which is why I read the manga and didn't even check out the anime for a single episode. I did watch Kaneki vs over again through the anime. I still do think the manga version was like way better than the anime version, but with Unravel in the background it made it a bit better. Enough with this banter, let's start talking about Tokyo Ghoul and why I didn't expect it to be this good. So although I've started this video out by saying Tokyo Ghoul surprised me a lot and that I did not expect it to be as good as it was. I want to start with one of my main criticisms of the series, which isn't too big of a criticism because I do have the same criticism for other series, but it is the slow start to the story. Tokyo Ghoul does sort of have a slow beginning. Not a lot of things happen. The first episode, I mean the first chapter was actually quite excellent, but after that it was pretty slow. I did enjoy the first chapter because it was very engaging and it really pulled me into the series, but it's coming off of the first chapter through the first arc or so it wasn't that appealing though i did keep reading through it it was only like 20 chapters or so and after that many new characters started to get introduced and after that i got hooked onto the series i especially got hooked during the arc where kaneki gets something uh, i'm not gonna spoil it because this is a spoiler free section of the video we're, we're gonna get into the spoilers later however i understand the need for a slow start because some series just need to start this way in order to develop the characters and really show us the world that we live in especially for a series like tokyo ghoul which is heavily centered around the idea that humans are not at the top of the food chain and there have been a lot of other series that implement this idea of humans not being at the top of the food chain the one that comes to mind the most is attack on titan but the difference between attack on titan and tokyo ghoul with the titans and the ghouls is that the ghouls are really human much more human at times than the other humans and this is a part of the story well not a part of the story but this is this is something they implement into tokyo ghoul that i love so much it may quite honestly be one of my favorite parts of the whole story and one of my favorite things about Tokyo Ghoul, it is the idea that sometimes the ghouls are more human than the humans themselves and sometimes the humans are more ghoul than the ghouls themselves i absolutely love the contrast between the human and the monster and the monster being in a human and the human being in the monster type thing that contrast is absolutely beautiful and i love when stories decide to do this because it just makes the idea of humanity and the idea of being human so much more abundant in the story and it just hits you somewhere. There's just something about stories with monsters that have a human side and humans that seem more like the monsters and that's exactly what Tokyo Ghoul does because for a lot of the story, the humans who are supposedly saving humanity from the dangers, the ghouls, are the ones that quite honestly seem like the monsters themselves. The doves primarily or the CCG, the organization that goes after ghouls trying to take them down and obliterate them from the world because they see them as nothing but evil, are basically pieces of shit that only see ghouls as danger and that only see ghouls as complete monsters that do not have any affection for their own kind or for humankind at all. Meanwhile, because we see the story through the perspective of the ghouls, we get to really see that ghouls are a lot like humans. They have family and they have emotions and they care for the people around them. They have friends and they truly do feel these same emotions that humans feel, such as fear, such as sadness and despair, and such as loneliness. In a world so centered around humanity and the survival of humanity, it is so crazy to me how those that we sympathize with the most being the humans actually seem like the monsters and for pretty much the entire story are the antagonists because our protagonist group revolves around Kaneki and the people around him. And that leads me into Kaneki because Kaneki is a phenomenal main character and he is someone that encompasses both the humanity and the monster inside. He is half human half ghoul 
not really a spoiler because if you read the first chapter you'll learn that pretty quickly assuming you're illiterate which now that i think about it shouldn't be an assumption but there's so many reasons why kaneki is a phenomenal main character and why i consider him to be the best written character in tokyo ghoul so far because i haven't gotten to read yet i love how kaneki constantly has to battle the idea of being both human and ghoul he's the only person in the story that has to feel this way from going human to ghoul completely changing from one species to another like imagine being a monkey and then becoming a human it's almost like that except not as extreme so Kaneki has to see the two sides of humanity and ghouls and oddly enough he actually sort of ends up being more ghoul than human because he realizes that humans don't treat ghouls properly and they treat them like complete monsters whereas some ghouls actually do have affection for humans and we see this later on but Kaneki is kind of the only person who understands what it's like to be on both sides and as I mentioned this makes him such a layered character and such a I guess dual personality character because at some points he's a lot more ghoul and at some points he's a lot more human not to mention the idea of this story being a tragedy is truly just facts it's complete facts kaneki goes through some of the most tragic things i've ever seen in a manga sometimes i honestly feel pain myself for this guy like truly he didn't get to choose any of this it's just completely faded and this man oh my god the things that he goes through as i was reading these panels i was holding the book in my hand reading this and man I'm not gonna get into spoilers, but if you know, you know, this was crazy. It's almost as if whatever direction or path Kaneki chooses to walk, which he does end up changing his goals many, many times in the story, no matter what he really chooses, despair lies at the end of it. After almost every arc, despair lies at the end of Kaneki's path. And we all know the iconic tragedy scene right here. Even if you haven't seen Tokyo Ghoul, you might have seen this around Twitter, maybe Reddit, maybe anywhere you might have seen this panel, but it's such an iconic panel. It just summarizes Kaneki and Tokyo Ghoul. Without getting into spoilers, I love how Tokyo Ghoul is more of a three-way battle with a lot of different antagonists. There isn't really one specific character you can say like, yep, this is the antagonist, this is the villain of the story. Maybe towards the end a certain character is, but for the majority of the story, there are so many different antagonists depending on the arc. And whilst I do like a solid setup antagonist, I do sort of enjoy the variety we get in Tokyo Ghoul, but I'm sure in Tokyo Ghoul Re, we're going to get more of a solid antagonist, or at least a solid group of antagonists like the Algiri tree. Everything I've said so far about Tokyo Ghoul is true, it's fact, it's great, it's an incredible story, but volume 14, my god, there, there, there's literally no words for me to describe volume 14. I did not expect it to be like that. My god, Oh my goodness. Alright, so this is going to be the spoiler section of the video. If you haven't read or watched Tokyo Ghoul up until the end of Tokyo Ghoul, get out of here. That's it for you. Peace out. I recommend Control Alt Delete Enter, but it's up to you. Just don't watch this video. Alright, I gotta sit down for this. Um, there's a lot I gotta talk about with this final volume. So it is the final arc of Tokyo Ghoul. The number of twists in this arc. Oh my This is what really made me want to make this video, even though I was going to make it if this didn't happen, but I did not expect things like Kaneki eating Hide, which might have not happened because it wasn't very clear, but I, I just have a feeling that's what happened. I did not expect Amon to die. I did not expect Juzo to, like, bro, did you see that panel, man? Oh my god, I'm getting too excited. That final battle with Arima that Kaneki had, like, is Kaneki actually dead, and is he, like, not going to be the main character of Tokyo Ghoul Re, or is he alive? Because if Kaneki is just dead like that, I'm kind of gonna be, I'm kind of gonna be pissed, bro, because he low-key has a lot more development left to go. He was still developed incredibly, and he's still in my top 10 protagonist. I love his character, but my god, he can be developed so much better, and he can quite literally end up becoming, like, a top 1 protagonist. I still have a feeling he's alive, but the way Arima finished him off was something else. There's some things I just can't really describe with Tokyo Ghoul because it's mostly just like portrayal of certain moments and the way the panels are drawn out because the way certain panels and certain moments are drawn out are unlike any other manga I've ever seen. It just encompasses the characters and their emotions unlike almost anything I've seen, especially the moments with Kaneki and his transformations and how he loses control of himself, like the moments with Hide, the moments when he was getting tortured by Jason and thinking of Rize. Those panels were truly art, man. The way Ishida does those panels is just something else okay another thing takatsuki is the one i she, she's yoshimura's kid i was about to say son but she's not a dude oh my god i gotta i gotta i gotta take my time here when we see this panel i kid you not i was i completely just skipped over it i'm like 
wait, who is this? And I just went over. But once I learned her name, I was like, hold up. There is no possible way you are being serious to me right now. There's no way this woman is the biggest villain in the entire story. There is no way she's, well, not villain because she's a ghoul, but there is no way she is the one eye ghoul. And she was. <laughs> that twist, that twist was some next level, bro. That twist was crazy. Or right, I've already spoken about this, but Amon and Sado, I think his name was, uh, their deaths were just, they hit, bro. Honestly, they hit. Amon was one of my favorite characters in Tokyo Ghoul. Sado was just such a sick character. That panel of him writing like the letter saying, I don't want to die. That hit, bro. That was so crazy to me. I could go so philosophical with this, but I'm not. And honestly, I think if I talk any more about Tokyo Ghoul, I'm going to have an aneurysm and end up posting it on YouTube. So I'm going to stop right here and just say, Tokyo Ghoul is an incredible series so far. I'm really enjoying it. I'm going to start re as soon as possible, but that's it.